The story of the Toyota Land Cruiser J-Series FJ-40 and BJ-40 starts in the Philippines during the Second World War. The Japanese had invaded the nation, along with much of the rest of East Asia, and they found an abandoned jeep that had been left by retreating American forces. There is a little contention as to exactly which jeep or jeep-like vehicle it was that they found. Most sources say it was either a Willys jeep or a Ford's jeep but some claim it was an American Bantam Mark II. Toyota themselves haven't included any reference to this captured vehicle in their own history of the Land Cruiser, and instead pick up the story in the 1950s. Whichever vehicle it was, we know that it was an American military 4x4, and we know the Japanese military immediately recognized how useful it would be to have their own version. It was shipped back to Japan, and Toyota was tasked with building a local version using as many off-the-shelf parts as possible. They were also instructed to make sure it didn't look too much like a Jeep. There were two Japanese vehicles made from the captured American Jeep. The first was the Type 4 compact cargo truck. The second was the AK-10 which was created by reverse engineering the American vehicle. The AK-10 was very similar to the Jeep it was based on, and was powered by an inline 4-cylinder 2.3-liter Toyota Type C gasoline engine. The AK-10 was fitted with a 3-speed manual transmission mated to a 2-speed transfer box. The Korean War beginning in mid-1950, with a new war to fight the U.S. military asked Toyota to make 100 Jeeps for the war effort using the Willys Jeep specifications, which they duly did. Then began the development of the Jeep-like vehicles that would give rise to the Toyota J-40 Land Cruiser series starting with the Toyota BJ in 1951. The vehicle gaining the name Land Cruiser coined by technical director Hanji Umehara in 1955. It's widely believed that the new name was inspired by the British Land Rover. Physically a bit larger than the original Bantam reconnaissance car and the Willys Jeep the J-Series Land Cruiser was an ideal size for a four-wheel drive vehicle for military or civilian use. Not only did Toyota get the physical size right but they also fitted the vehicle with a more powerful engine than the British Land Rover or the original Willys Jeep. They fitted it with the Toyota Type B 3.4-liter inline six-cylinder gasoline engine. The one thing the 4x4 did not have however was a transfer case providing low and high range options. Perhaps it was thought that with that size and power of engine with its excellent low-speed torque that low-range gearing would not be needed. To demonstrate the prowess of the Toyota BJ and demonstrate that it didn't need a low-range transfer box each Euro Terra drove a BJ to the sixth level of Mount Fuji, becoming the first person to do so. Ichiro Terra's drive was supervised by Japan's National Police Agency and it so impressed them that made the Toyota BJ their official police four-wheel drive patrol car and placed an order for 289 of them. By 1953 production of the Toyota BJ was in full swing with three model variants on offer, the BJT Touring model, the BJR radio vehicle, and the BJJ Cowl chassis which could be equipped with a special custom body such as for making a fire engine for example. 1954 saw the BJJ also offered as the FJJ fitted with the larger and more powerful Toyota Type F inline six-cylinder gasoline engine. This 3.9-liter engine was a perfect power plant to haul around the necessarily heavier bodies that were fitted to the cowl chassis versions. The J20 Land Cruiser was introduced in 1955 and was an upgrade of the original BJ and FJ. The suspension was improved with the fitting of four plate leaf springs inherited from a Toyota light truck and the body styling was also made more attractive. This model featured the curved fenders and hood bonnet style that would define the look of the J40 series that was to come. For the J20 and J30 series Toyota offered a new and more powerful version of the Type F engine. Still a 3.9 liters capacity but this one providing 133 horsepower. This engine was mounted a little further forward to increase interior space and especially to improve front leg room for tall drivers. These models still lacked a low-range and high-range transfer box although the three-speed gearbox was provided with synchromesh on second and third gears. Body styles offered for the J20 and J30 series included the open soft top and a range of others including two-door and four-door wagons and pickups. Of all the things that emerged in the early 1960s the Toyota Land Cruiser J40 proved to be one of the most practical and durable new things of all. If you were out in some remote part of the world where vehicle failure could prove fatal not only for the vehicle but also for its occupants unless there was a pre-arranged rescue organized, then a Toyota Land Cruiser was a comforting thing to have, especially one with a diesel engine and a decent two-way radio.
By the time I went to work in a mining town in the Australian outback in the early 1970s there were very few other 4x4s to be seen. Every man and his dog seemed to have a land cruiser and they were all very happy with them. One of the major improvements that helped ensure that the J40 Land Cruiser would become a legend in its own time was it being fitted with a low-range high range transfer case making it much easier to crawl uphill and down dale when the going got steep and often rocky. Although it still had a three-speed gearbox there were farmers and pastoralists who preferred that over the four-speed which was fitted from 1974. Regarding the second gear of the three-speed box perfect for cruising along fire brakes and trails where top gear was just too quick for the task and in the four-speed box third was a tad too high and second definitely too low. The J40 was initially fitted with much the same 3.9-liter Type F inline six-cylinder gasoline engine as its predecessors but improved and delivering 125 horsepower. In 1974 the four-speed gearbox replaced the three-speed, to the delight of some, and to the chagrin of others, and the Land Cruiser was also offered with the four-cylinder 3.0-liter Type B diesel engine. The following year in 1975 the gasoline engine was improved on with a new 4.2 liter inline 6 1976 saw the US model of the FJ40 receive front disc brakes to help it lose momentum rather more quickly than its old fashioned drum brake siblings. American FJ40s also were offered with air conditioning and power steering in 1979. 1981 saw the diesel engine BJ40 also offered with disc brakes and the long wheelbase BJ45 was offered with the 3.4 liter inline 4 cylinder type 3B diesel engine. Some markets were supplied with the 3.6 liter inline 6 cylinder type H diesel engine as an option from 1973. In 1981 this engine option was upgraded to the 4 liter diesel. Production of the J40 was phased out finally ending in 1984. The Bandeirant Brazilian Land Cruisers Toyota's J40 Land Cruiser was made in various parts of the world and Brazil was one of those nations. Toyota had established itself in Brazil in June 1952 with a modest 200 meter by 50 meter assembly plant which initially assembled completely knocked down kits imported from Japan. This was complicated by a government ban on the importation of spare parts however and Toyota's efforts to get spare parts of a sufficient quality control standard proved difficult. Local parts were not equal in quality to Japanese made parts and were also expensive. In 1958 Toyota established Toyota do Brasil Industria e Comercio Limitada as a subsidiary company to build Toyotas in Brazil. On Christmas Eve of that year Toyota do Brasil purchased the local Land Rover manufacturing facility as Land Rover had decided to withdraw from the Brazilian market. Production began with the FJ25L Land Cruiser in May 1959 and production was progressively expanded with the move to a large facility in San Bernardino on the outskirts of San Paulo which was completed in late 1962. Production of the J40 based vehicles beginning with the TB41L long wheelbase hardtop began in 1963. In order to ensure a level of local production agreeable to the Brazilian government the engines of these vehicles were sourced from Mercedes-Benz do Brasil Limitada. So these Toyota Land Cruiser Bandeirant, Pioneer, J40 vehicles were fitted with Brazilian made Mercedes diesel engines and have some body and light fitting differences to the J40 Land Cruisers made in Japan. Today all of these Toyota models have improved their quality and reliability. They are collectible and don't be surprised if you see Toyota even in the worst condition with high price tag.